Joe and him are prepping up here, getting ready uh, to do everything in a, a good way to starting off uh, with our, our pipe and our, and our words and our language. But, you know, uh, we heard a lot of things about our camp here in the Pinocchio, the Kudere Harvest Camp. And you had the opportunity to walk through this camp here. And what you see here, okay, to a lot of people is it's a camp, okay? Uh, there's some eagle feathers up in this hole, okay? We were, we're putting up flags today representing tribal nations and peace effort groups uh, for what we're going to do. But what you don't see in our, in our, in our Shinabe way, in the Shinabe is a common, the Indian way of life, you know, uh, everything, these rocks, in the, to the, to the Anishinaabe, has a meaning. Right now, to you, it might be an inanimate, inanimate object. But when we use them in our ceremonies, we bring them, we bring them back to life. In our sweat lodge, our due to swan. Okay, and that helps us out. And in the stories here, we have our Inanatic trees, our maple trees. And, and, uh, and the story behind that, Okay, not, you know, uh, uh, hopefully our grandfathers will look, look the other way and, and say uh, it's a humble thing that he's trying to do here. But normally these sto stories are told in the wintertime. When you're in a lodge, our grandmothers used to tell these stories. Okay, and, and, and the maple sugar and how it came to the Anishinaabe people. Okay, it used to come out already, ready to go. Put it on your pancake, put it on whatever you want to do. And it made our people lazy. Okay, and then so our spirits told us, like, why is everybody laying around, not doing, getting, you know, big bellies and, and not being industrious and uh, everything else. So the spirits turned that to water. Says, we're going to make these people work for that maple, maple sugar. And so today it takes a lot of work. Depending on your tree, you got hard maple, soft maple, red maple. Okay, the story's on it. Now you go back to our... To our uh, uh, we can take our birch bark trees here. On that, the bark we use that for coverings for our lodges. We make baskets to hold our food. But also, there's a story behind that. And if you ever take a piece of birch bark and unwrap it, okay, there's a story there imprinted upon that birch bark wrapping. Okay, where somebody got mad because they didn't take care of their camp. And the first thing they found was a bird. And when we got that bird, that unfortunate bird happened to be hit against that tree. Okay, that birch bark, okay. And so the imprint of that bird is on the inside of that, that, that birch bark tree. So there's a lot of things that you see here in our manun. Manunan tree there, that ironwood. The ribs of our frames of our, our wigwams. Wigiwams, not wigwams, wigiwams is what they're called. The correct way of saying that. And so in the stories, all kinds of stories that go around here. And you look at our Gizek, our cedar here. You know, there, there are certain things that were given to us, and one was Sema that we hold in our hand. And our Gizek goes in the south, and the Wingush, the sage goes to the west. And Wingush, the, the, the sweet grass for the north, these are medicines that were given to us in that. And they each have their direction along with those, those spirits that sit in those directions. And we have to know how to use those. And so, when you look at this camp, there's stories, there's history. And when we look back at the French that first came here, they accepted the way we lived our life. And a lot of times now where you can go back into genealogy and you go back into the chronicles of a, of a church, you know, and the, and the French recorded a lot of things, and, and, and a lot of genealogy, genealogy comes out of that. You know, so when we look at these camps, and, and you sit here at night, you hear the wind blow, or, you, or it might be raining, you know, it's all there for a purpose, and, and, and that's the way we want to keep it. Why? Because we want to tell our, our future generations how we use this Mother Earth. Okay, it's all right to take the tree. Our, our, our ancestors knew that. Take the tree. Leave the stump. Why? Because that tree will come back. But when you take the earth and you start destroying that, nothing will come back. Our teachings, okay, in the same ah, tobacco, 
There's a good and a bad. If you use it in a good way and offer it, okay, good things will come with you. Use it in the wrong way, you're going to suffer. Cancer and all kinds of diseases that you can get from it. So there's good and bad in everything. It's on how you observe it, how you use it, okay? And we all know that. But our young people don't know that. We have to teach that to them. And that's, how, that's why we're here, is to try to make a better life for our, for our youth, our generations to come. And so I just wanted to add that much. Uh, and of course, I know we have a, a garden over here, you know, uh, that we planted and, and, and it's giving, okay? And we get our sustenance from, from the earth. And so whatever we do, it, and, and water is the most precious. Without water, we wouldn't be here. I heard somebody say your body's 98% water. So, what's that telling you? 97.9. Uh, I stand corrected, Paul. <laughs> okay, so, but that, I just wanted to share that much with you, that uh, there is a lot of history. And, uh, and if, if somebody came up here and looked at our camp and said that, oh, it's all dirty, uh, I can look over here and I see a pile of rubbish there that uh, uh, our campers came over here and picked up and, and, and put in a pile, a nice little pile there, so we can haul it away when, whenever we decide to leave. Okay, so we're doing good. Honor the earth. Respect the earth. Good words. Thank you for your words.